Dylan Holmes Williams, congratulations. Uh, as of yesterday, approximately 6 p.m. Mountain Time, you are a winner in the shorts program for Best International Shorts Feature, I think that's the title of it. Uh, or something like that. Yeah. I'm garbling it up. Yeah, exactly. Grand Jury International something. Yeah. It sounds good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so it appears that your interests would be aligned with genre films. Uh, that's what I'm getting a sense of that. So, yeah. um, and the fact that this participated in Fantastic Fest certainly adheres to that idea. So, um, yeah, just give me a sense of perhaps your beginnings and where your interests lie in cinema. Yeah, um, well, I, I mean, I, I came up with this uh, idea when I was making a music video for an acapella club, okay. um, and I basically realized how incredibly creepy they are. And I thought that seems like an interesting premise for a monster and a kind of twisted high school musical. Um, and so that was a kind of starting point, and I've always been interested in films that have a kind of grounded supernaturalism to them. Um, so that's always kind of been my, that's how I really got into it. Um, I guess early on I was watching like Lars von Trier stuff, really, I really dug that, particularly his like earlier work and then moved on and like people like David Lynch and more recently like Lanthimos and that's, that, that sort of thing. Um, and so yeah, so my, everything I try and do has got that, that thing of being dark and a little bit humorous but unsettling and, and uh -huh. often with a kind of high concept supernatural element that is quite grounded in reality. So perhaps you can discuss um, your statusism in terms of like how you wanted um, the Devil's Harmony to look like and and why that was important to you. Yeah, certainly. Um, I uh, I'm I, well, what's the kind of logic behind it? I guess it's uh, I wanted to create a world that felt very kind of uncomfortable and unpleasant for our main character who is this girl who's being bullied at school and going through this rough time um, and uh, I wanted to, have to like throw that character into a world in which everyone is just acting a little bit weirdly and strangely um, and so you kind of get on her side with her sort of revenge mission mm -hmm. um, and there's also a kind of comedy I guess a sort of dark comedy to, to the whole situation um, and yeah I mean in terms of the kind of colour and aesthetics, what we did with our short was really try and suck everything into a kind of a very specific colour space. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that started off with the location. So we hunted, hunted, hunted uh, for a very specific type of school that had this sort of tealy, greeny, bluey, uh, like pale, pastel colour palette. Um, and we then sort of tried to thread that through uh, every other location. And, and in our short there's there are a lot of locations and I think that's always a danger if you're not able to kind of unify it. And I think one way of doing that is to kind of actually suck the colour out. And mm -hmm. so, the, for, for the record, yeah. the school is very unschool-like. It's almost like yeah. uh, how I imagine um, like uh, industry or like you would build stuff in a space like that. It just yeah. like, it, yeah. it's like you say, it's like the, the, the colours are sucked out. Yes, exactly. Um, I mean, totally. And I think what I wanted to do was obviously uh, British schools I think in everyone's kind of creative imagination have a particular aesthetic, which is probably like Harry Potter, um, which is a kind of more Hogwartsy, like wooden paneling and like old Victorian um, features and stuff like that. And I really wanted to create a world that felt like exactly like you're saying, like a kind of institutional, like almost like a prison, like somewhere that wasn't quite real as a school. It had a kind of dystopian quality. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think that just like facilitates and, and allows for like a more heightened uh, set of like character dynamics and like plotting and stuff like that um, if your location is already quite heightened and unusual. Um, so yeah, absolutely. And it was all, also the film was always like riffing on American high school movies basically. Mm -hmm. So to an extent I was trying to find a school that had a similar, a similar aesthetic to those schools to an extent. Um, you know, fluorescent long corridors and you know, yeah, that's kind of Kub Kubrickian corridors and the kind of fluorescent lights and that sort of thing, um, which are kind of more reminiscent of American schools. Like um, yeah. The acapella thing is, uh, is ingenious. Um, <laughs> it's pandemic bliss. And um, so I really appreciated the idea of tribalism. And you, you just mentioned prison. And like I like the fact that your, your, your two teams are, are very much, um, they're visually marked. Um, mm. I, I got a true kick out of that. Um, <laughs> I was wondering if you could discuss um, that preciseness about how the, the 
how you wanted your characters to look. It's, it's very distinct. Um, well, in terms of the production design, um, like I say, we had this school with this very particular color scheme, teal and like green and light blue and stuff. And we then sort of just tried to thread that through as many other elements of the, uh, as many other locations as we could. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, in the squash courts, there's like, uh, we turned the red stripes to like tealy blue. And then there's a scene in the showers um, when a boy gets sung to sleep and there's like a kind of blue stripe behind him. And then there's a bedroom scene and there's a blue stripe in the background of that. So it's subtle stuff that like you wouldn't notice as a viewer, but I think mm -hmm. just like subconsciously makes your brain feel like these locations are kind of somehow connected. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the kind of production design. And then in terms of costume, yeah, we obviously went for quite a surreal thing because like we're in a school, but the members of the squash squad are just wearing like full squash whites at all times with like shorts, um, even in like lessons or whatever. Um, and I think, again, that just like, we were, we were just trying to be quite confident and bold in terms of um, in terms of building this like dystop this dystopian world mm -hmm. and just trying to just 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 you know like putting faith in the viewer that they would get on board with that and not trying to obey too many like specific procedural rules about how schools really work um, and I think all of that allows you to get away with like more heightened plotting and characters like I say mm -hmm. yeah yeah I like even the the headmaster uh, he feels like a zombie or robot or he, he's not yeah. from this planet. Um, yeah. <laughs> The, there's the comical scene where he repeats himself. Um, yeah. So this short's been, if I'm not if I stand correct, it's been at Fantastic Fest. I, I think it went to Stage before. Uh, Sitges. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Yeah. Um, which is <laughs> those are two of like yeah. the top four or five genre film festivals in the world. Yeah. Um, is this is sort of like where? Is this where your particular interests are? Like, would you lean towards that in terms of developing a future shorts or a feature length film? Yeah, I think so. Um, it's quite hard, I guess, to put your finger on exactly why, but that, that just like... It speaks is, to you. It speaks to me. It's the most like authentic kind of reflection of how I feel the world is, and I, I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, but it, it's also, I guess, with this film in particular, we were trying to kind of do like a postmodern high school film. Because mm -hmm. you obviously have like the a cappella club and the jocks, which is like very archetypal, cheesy, like 90s American-y uh, high school movie things. And then it was just going like, what is the like, what's like a darker version of that story and like, what's the kind of reality um, that those films don't kind of like, that those films sort of gloss over, like what's the reality of school life, which is that for many people it's actually like, it's not poppy and fun and like kind of campy, it's kind of actually quite like grim and, and things go horribly wrong and people get bullied and etc etc. So it was kind of trying to like take that like more poppy, happy aesthetic and like, trick the viewer and like switch it up and basically just make it like a horror thing mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> i appreciate it from from the onset it's like you you instill like a it's so abs like it's so absurdly not normal but yet it's been normalized and you get a sense of like okay shit like somebody's drinking kool-aid or something and, yeah. and things are off, are awfully off balance and yeah uh, well i think i mean yeah like one of the primary themes of the short is i guess like toxic masculinity and like how men kind of uh sort of subscribe to these like very arbitrary ideals about what masculinity is and so the squash squad was kind of a way like making our jocks squash players was kind of a way to kind of allude to that because yeah. um, we were sort of saying you know just as subscribing to like archetypal ide ideals about masculinity is kind of arbitrary and weird and, and random and, uh, and, and not authentic by the same token like let's have our jocks be this like subscribe to this that's how our jobs be squash players and like get really into this sport which is inherently like a little bit silly yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah that was the kind of idea with, with that sport and then also I guess the aesthetic of squash is quite uh, handy for our kind of overall scheme it's like white and pale yeah um, boxed and in boxed in and, 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 and yeah. fluorescent lights in the courts and stuff so I just didn't want to do like American football or like soccer or of course football. yeah it just feels like I don't know it felt too kind of obvious so what are your hopes for I guess this short film is still gonna run the film festival circuit it's got some more mileage left so what are your yeah. hopes with with uh, with um, with this film and then of course uh, what are you leaning towards in terms of maybe things that you want to explore or themes or stuff like that yeah 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 uh well actually this is we're sort of towards the end of our festival run mm -hmm. um so we premiered back in august and played various festivals and then we're delighted to get into sundance quite quite surprised 
Um, and so who knows whether that will kind of give us some extra life in terms of some other festivals. Um, but really I'm just kind of focused on getting a, a feature going, um, getting a feature off the ground and, and, and one of the features I'm working on is a version of The Devil's Harmony which is a longer version of that okay. story basically. Um, so we're kind of speaking to people about that and working out what that would look like and so that's kind of exciting, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, it's, uh, so this short is more or less uh, a proof of concept perhaps or... or Yes. Or you're embedded. You're getting yourself embedded in this world and and, and yeah. killing it out a little bit. Absolutely, yeah. It's a uh, yeah. This film was always intended to be like a proof of concept for a feature, and you know, I had this idea for this film probably like five or six years ago. So in all that time, I've been thinking about the feature and how it would work, okay. and it's gone and it's changed a lot, and it's changed even compared to the short film. And I think there's things that we can execute so much better. Um, so we're just kind of working out what that would look like, and yeah, I sort of now at this stage, it's kind of like a. It's become a kind of like dark musical, sort of mm. high school musical meets Carrie meets Dancer in the Dark, that amazing Lars von Trier film wow. from 2000. Um, so we're kind of looking at working with a composer to the guy who did the short as well as potentially other people to, um, to kind of build out these very like twisted, uh, saccharine but somehow like warped musical numbers. Um, to kind of create like a dark, a dark high school film. Sweet, so, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, a great approach, actually. <laughs> Thinking of score and sound well before. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people don't go about it that way, but if yeah. it's a, if it's part of the DNA of a larger feature, then yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, last question: What what are sort of things outside of cinema that inform you about? Um, your ideas on cinema, or yeah. or perhaps even this film. What are what are some reference points for you? Um, well, I have a background as a musician, so okay. so uh, a very bad musician. But I was in a like tragic indie band from the ages of thirteen to seventeen, okay. um, which was like semi successful. Like, we did an album and we did a yeah, which we recorded with uh, Gordon Raphael, who's the Strokes producer, and so wow. we did some cool stuff. Okay. But then we released the album and it sold fifty copies, and so I think we all thought, right, let's pack it in and try try an alternative career. But I guess that bug has always like stuck with me, and so a lot of the time when I'm thinking about ideas, um, mm -hmm. music is the thing that comes first. Okay. So the song in the Devil's Harmony is something is, is a melody that came to me like literally like five years ago before this film had any uh, was in my head at all mm -hmm. and it was only when we were kind of working out what they might sing that I thought oh that song would work really, really well um, so so yeah so uh, and then I guess more broadly like I'm I'm just I'm just really interested in the kind of political climate uh, across you're, the globe at the moment you're London and, based right now I'm London based okay yeah, so you're but, seeing a little bit the, the, there's the whole Brexit thing but also yeah. seeing a lot of countries that are polarising yeah and I think that's definitely obviously that's just a pretty explicit theme of this film is like it's about sides and warring and like people not being able to communicate uh, across mm -hmm. across groups and like that feels quite pressing and so I think we're really trying to like double down on that for the future and make make a, a high school film for adults basically cool. yeah <laughs> well thank you very much yeah. Dylan and congratulations once again on uh, on the silverware or golden trophy yeah. or whatnot um, but yeah thank you very much hey this is Eric from myoncinema.com if you want to support us subscribe below for more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.